Hey guys, Brian coming back at you from Whitefly Outfitters. It's January, it's cold, water temperatures in the 30s. Nobody's out there fishing for smallmouth. So the thing to do, sit down with the vise, tie up some flies, get ready for the season. What I'm going to show you today is a super, super duper easy fly that you can tie with materials listed below. I'll put them in the comments. Pretty simple. You've got a helgramite tail preformed, which really makes the fly stand out. Some standard bucktail, color of choice. Some either saddle hackle or schlappen. I really like schlappen because it gives you more of a buggy material. Some legs, some eyes, and some dubbing. Really quick goes together. Let me show you how to get started. All right, guys, uh, this is it. Pretty simple, deadly smallmouth bass fly. You can strip it, you can let it tumble through um, the rapids, you can swing it, you can throw it under an indicator. Um, just a lot of flexibility. Cesare, we had a customer come in and interrupt. So that's the, this is the fly, awesome little bugger. Uh, by the way, it is not a woolly bugger. I get a lot of that. I get, hey, that's just like a woolly bugger. It is nothing like a woolly bugger. Woolly bugger doesn't have a tail. Woolly bugger doesn't use bucktail. The only thing woolly bugger does have in common with this is it has some hackle on it. So just because it has a little hackle doesn't mean it's a woolly bugger. So sorry about that interruption. Let's get started. Here's a Here's your sign. Here's a fly that I already put the eyes on. Um, for those of you that don't know how to put eyes on yet, uh, sorry about that, but I wanted to make this more about the fly than applying the eyes, and we'll, we'll go back and revisit that on another video. So we start with the eyes, and we actually start with the underbelly of the fly so this is where a rotary vice comes in real handy ding there's another sale on the internet awesome so um, so a rotary vice is going to allow you to turn the vice turn the fly over and tie in this little what we call hot spot color and a hot spot color is something that the bass is going to focus on so we we'll tie that on Sorry if my big old hands are in the way. They're actually not that big, but in the video they probably look huge. So here we go. Tie on the critter mite tail itself. That was pretty easy. Boy, this is this is pretty hard. So I'm gonna line this up. First one you had to guess from experience. Um, to be just about as long as the critter mite tail. This one I can line up and 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 do it just right. So there you go. You got a little bit of wing on the top, and what that wing does that gives you the illusion of those legs moving to a fish. And remember, a lot of fly fishing, a lot of fly tying. Excuse me, a lot of fly tying is about creating the illusion that it's alive. Um, so many people try to make realistic looking flies, and that's great as a as a as a hobbyist, you know, hey I want to make an exact duplicate of a crick hopper or a dragonfly, and I really want to make it look detailed with the wings spayed out. And whatnot, but what you'll find is you spay the wings out on something like that, it's it's gonna want to tend to helicopter on you. Alright, so put the dubbing up over the head. Whoa, you're jumping ahead of yourself. Yeah, normally in fly tying you start from back and move forward. But what I found is if you don't dub the head, then it's really hard to dub around all this other stuff that you're gonna put on there. Um, which is your slapping or your saddle hackle. This is saddle. 
I didn't want to dig around for a schlap and schlap and looks a little buggier but for the video this will work out fine and fish just fine so we're gonna wrap this guy on here and uh, just make a couple turns with that and it's okay to make it look buggy because this is what we're trying to do there we go that's what I'm looking for those those uh, really webby bottom end of the uh, the hackle the junky stuff that you're not going to use for those nice woolly buggers that you're going to tie up as you can see we're already coming together here I got one more optional step too we use this fly for years for years uh, just like that and the slapping uh, here creates the movement and the illusion of legs but what I've been, been doing in the last a uh, couple months of the season I've been putting some legs on just to make it look a little better really you know there's flies that catch fish and there's flies that catch people and uh, in this case because we sell these guys here at the shop it's got to be both so everybody wants legs on it so it's not going to hurt the fishability of the fly to put some legs on and uh, it looks great people love it it's a great addition and uh, as you can see I'm taking the leg I'm wrapping it around the, the thread and I'm just working it down inside that slapping and bam just goes right in there you don't need much to hold that on I did two wraps of thread um, and I'm going to just go ahead and hand whip finish right back here or a uh, not even do a whip finish actually oh wow got my legs in there see real real time action man life is not a box of ro box of chocolates as Forrest says Sometimes you have some challenges. You can go ahead and whip finish the front of it if you would like, if you're a whip finish guy. I don't do a lot of whip finishing. I'll take a little bit of head cement, put it on a thread, wrap it around there a couple of times, tie another half hitch, and, and call it a day. So that is tying Tuesdays, and I think that's a record time on the Helgramite fly. See ya.